Tottenham. This is one of the famous sites of Tottenham, Spurs football ground. Tottenham is planning to actually make a major difference in the area and expand on their stadium with lots of other plans too. We are quite anxious but also excited about how we can actually join actions in the community and bring nature closer to our communities in Tottenham. We've been talking to uh, Tottenham Foundation. They seem to be interested in our agenda of understanding food and creating different type of agenda around food. And we have got big challenges like obesity in our communities, but we also have enormous amount of spirit to try to make a difference. And we hope Spurs, like other partners like Lee Valley and Haringey Council and our community, a voluntary sector and other people like growing in Haringey's and residence group can help and support to promote the message of blooming beds and bees, which means nature closer to our communities. You know what about Blooming Beds and Bees? It's turned out to be so much more than we ever thought it would be. Originally we thought it was going to be just a seven week course, fairly limited, but what people wanted and the ideas we put in, it became a 21 week course for m many more people than we thought. Uh, people have come from all sorts of places, um, always very different understanding of, of, what, of what they want to achieve and different aims, um, but always that same intention of bringing more bringing more nature and bringing more respect for, for the environment um, and more and having more control and more empowerment around, around their food supply. Well, we were just parked on Millmead Road um, because we'd come to look at the flat um, that we were hoping to buy in the new development next door and um, we saw the allotments and we thought, brilliant, um, allotments just over the road because, you know, we, we'd always wanted an allotment and um, came to the gate and Layla came out in a straw hat and kind of said, come and join us, come and join in and, and be part of this um, just straight away without even an introduction. Um, and then we, we, got to, we got to talking and she said, we're starting a beekeeping course soon and we'd like you to be involved. And then we got involved with the community garden as well. And it's brilliant just being in this area of London and being able to get outdoors and have a bit of green space and grow some food and be involved in something that's this kind of, in contrast to the local area, is brilliant. It's quite an urban environment, Tottenham. There's, there's not a huge amount of green spaces. So at the allotments here, they can grow food and hopefully take some of the things that they learn um, from that to, to their own plots. Um, and one of the other things that we thought that they could do also quite simply is, is to keep bees. So it gives them um, some sort of contact with nature. Um, and it's probably the easiest way of actually getting involved in keeping livestock. First time I came down, I was a bit sort of weary of the bees and um, sort of handling them and that sort of thing. But after a few weeks, getting used to it and seeing what Ian was doing and what he was sort of showing us to do, sort of built your confidence a lot. And um, by the end of the sort of four or five week session, you sort of actually felt, oh yeah, I really want to get in there and do that. The idea of the course is to um, set up some um, beekeepers probably about 10 um, community beekeeping groups within the Tottenham Haringey area. So the idea is to um, get people that are complete beginners, complete novices, and bring them up to a level where they can look after the bees themselves um, without too much intervention from myself or um, other experienced beekeepers. I think it was one of the best courses that I've ever been on. It's not just helped me out with uh, the bees and shrubs and flowers, but I've made lots of friends who are now beekeepers and we can call on each other at any time for any help that we need. The course has been run by Ian Bailey, uh, an extremely good beekeeper and he's done it for at least 20 years. To me that is worth a million pounds because you don't go away half cocked that you don't know what they're talking about. He, he explains it extremely slowly and very easily. It's not hard and it's the best thing everyone should do is take up bees. We've got 250 species of bee. Um, there's a lot of publicity for the honeybee, but very little f for all these other species, and they're just as important. Um, honeybees have their place, but the other species of bees provide us with um, our food as well. So it's important to understand what they need and what their requirements are, and get people interested in bees, 
and in gaining interest in me is getting interested in nature in a, in a wider context. This is quite a different course to what I normally teach in that um, we're really teaching people to go and take their learning very specifically to, to other parts of their own communities that really maximise and multiplies the learning they do and, and bring this element of, of self-learning that is so important rather than just all being taught. It's a very mixed bunch of skills that people have been bringing some people have brought amazing knowledge of herbs, some people have brought amazing knowledge of, of wildlife, of biodiversity, of conservation, of tools, of you know body awareness. Um, and everyone's been really learning from each other. And I think as the course progressed, I almost feel like, like my role and Ayla's role have really kind of um, really grown down as, as, as the people on the course have really increased their, their input into the course. The pack has been very important. Um, first, it's grown alongside people's skills. So every every week, the pack's got bigger. Uh, the pack's contained handouts and fact sheets about horticulture, about community gardens. Um, but mainly, it's been, I think, a reminder for people to build a portfolio. My other job, aside of here, is to do outreach work um, and food growing outreach work specifically. And, and I suppose we've experimented with quite a lot of formats in, in how we do that and how we encourage people to take a lead um, in growing food in their communities. And I think that, to me, this looks like a very efficient format because people have been really doing it. I mean, I can see results now. children at my school don't really have gardens and they've got very little experience of growing their own food or getting involved in um, food and really understanding where it comes from. So I think coming down to the allotment really helped them to see things firsthand um, and have some practical experience that they probably wouldn't have got otherwise. Then they started hassling the head teacher to start growing, having growing spaces in the front of the school. Um, really replicating the allotment they'd seen here and we had a plot of um, land next to the nursery which was an old caretaker's garden so we started doing the pro our version of the project from the nursery then and it sort of evolved from there. I've always been interested in making in ensuring that our children get a feel of how important it is um, to grow food and the process that they have to go through, go through to grow food but we did not have the means to do it from the very beginning. So when Blooming Beds and Beasts came along, that sort of gave us the means to um, put the project into fruition. Blooming Beds and Beasts project came up and I went on the course. And part of that course was to start your own project, a leadership and development program. And I'm a governor at the school and I was doing a learning walk here. And then I thought, well, let me come and check the garden again. And I thought, this place is perfect and I had seen how much my children loved running around the allotment, loved growing and saying, Mom, look what I planted and eating tomatoes and, and I thought it would be wonderful for the children of the school to be able to get that same feeling and enthusiasm. It's also a way of getting the children engaged because if they don't like greens, if they know they've planted it, they're usually a lot more happy to eat it. The project is part of the curriculum. If you look at within the science curriculum, it is about growing things, um, living things, and children need to learn ab um, about the process that living things have to go through. So it's, it's part of the, the curriculum. On the other hand, it's also part of our work with the community. We're very much proud of the work we do with our community and we're always looking for means to enhance that work. Now, we've also been able to get some of the parents and what we've done is give them some basic understanding of what plants are, how they grow, brought them out into the garden so that they can actually come and see what their children have been planting and then go away and plant themselves. And hopefully what we're able to do then is to get parents and children engaging in that act together. So this is actually phase one of the project and phase two and three is actually expanding and growing fruits and giving the children an area, a wild area where they can learn about wildlife. But ultimately what we want to do is to engage the children. So what it does, it puts this, this training into their lives so that as they get older, they can appreciate nature more, they can appreciate food, where it comes from, and they can ultimately pass this on to their children. So it's actually an intergenerational thing. And if we get the parents and children working together, it's something that they'll always remember.
The project started late last year when we were able to get a contract with the landlords of these two shop fronts who have given us a contract for three years um, to convert the space into a food growing and community space. We've received training from, um, from Blooming Beds and Beads, so I'm on the beekeeping training, I'm also on the food growing training. Um, we've had um, health and safety training, we've had food hygiene training from Blooming Beds and Beads, and also we've had quite a lot of support in sourcing resources, but also getting um, support for volunteers to come down and work with us. The youngest person working on this project is seven, and the eldest is 89. Um, so it, it brings like, you know, community cohesion into the community. It teaches people about food and growing food. It teaches people about the importance of the environment. It also makes a big difference to the, the residents that can see things happening through their windows around us. You know, and just being here has made a big difference to the whole area um, because people have, have started making, you know, changes for the better to, to make the whole space, you know, a, a, a more comfortable place to be. Really. Part of the Blooming Beds and Bees idea was to bring everything together at the end into a big community festival, a Blooming Beds and Bees festival. So all the different projects and everyone that's been involved can come and show off what they've done. It will be our kind of take on the Chelsea Flower Show. And we did that. It's a day I'll never forget because it took weeks of planning the weather was terrible. We did have five or six hundred people there um, against all the odds. But what was great about it was that everyone that had been involved in Blooming Beds and Bees and Living Under One Sun came together and we really worked as a team. We put on a big festival with all the, all, showing all the work we've done, scarecrow competition, music, lovely food, everything. It was fantastic and the whole, even despite the weather, what was special was the feeling between all of us that have worked on it, the vibe between it all, everybody, was really, really positive. And although we were all so tired at the end of the day, we actually felt brilliant. Tottenham's got definitely a chequered sort of history and I think a lot of what this type of community project does, it tries to show people there's more to Tottenham than the bad aspects or things that are under the spotlight. Um, it also brings people together and it makes people feel better about where they live and the fact that there are opportunities outside their front door. I have to travel through the city on a daily basis. There's a lot going on. It's like being in a human beehive, essentially. Um, and it's just really nice to be able to come out here and feel like um, you're a steward of something um, and actually be able to um, spend some time looking after something. As new residents in a community, it's important that we that we're in, that we're involved in the community. That we're not just tenants in a building or you know residents in a building. That we're actually part of and contributing to the community. And Blooming Beds and Bees has been the gateway to doing that. I think there's two things we've really learnt from Blooming Beds and Bees. Firstly, that actually schools, housing estates, community groups young people have all got involved in their own projects and linked up with us and, and, and it's possible to turn what were derelict areas into growing areas, to link it up with beekeeping, making honey and healthy living. It actually works, so that's the first thing um, and there's a whole demand out there. Second thing is we didn't allow enough time in the project to support all these community champions and schemes that we've got involved with and got started off. The demand is there, lots of people want to get things going in their area, in their patch, in their school and we, we've now applied to Haringey Council's Innovation Fund to try and secure funding to develop this and take it further into other areas, mainly in the east of the borough which is where it's, where it's needed in, in Tottenham.
you know, schools working on this project, we have um, special needs projects working on this, we have elderly projects working on this. So it's about kind of like bringing the community together and showing that, you know, it's, there's not that much of a separation and that good things can come out of Tottenham.